Swords of Legends Online. I remember the insane hype they built up for the Western release of this Eastern-inspired MMORPG. You had banner adverts, sponsored posts, pre-roll ads. I myself even got about four emails asking me to make content for it. This was a buy-to-play, no-cash shop, no-pay-to-win martial arts MMORPG. Hell, even r slash MMORPG were excited for it, and those guys hate everything about MMORPGs. So why didn't Swords of Legend Online dominate the West when it released. Those d d demon students have set up ramparts made of human bodies along the edge of the cliff, and, and we'll end up being part of them if we approach them, and, and d d don't think we can make it to the top of the cliff. Do not worry. Watch as I take my original form and break through their ramparts. To think that such a tragedy could occur in this prosperous capital before the regent's very eyes. If I hadn't seen it for myself, I wouldn't believe it. Tianjin, you all right? Stop playing, get the sword. Ah, right. They spent the voice acting budget on marketing, and unless you speak Chinese, the whole game sounds like your high school drama club trying to outact each other. You know what? Let's play it and see how bad it can get. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Strife Hayes, and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play every MMO game I can find on a journey to find the worst. Drop a like on the video or sub to the channel for more MMO stuff. Ring the bell for all the future notifications. As usual, a massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel going. More info on this at the end. For now, Let's begin. Swords of Legends, a 2014 Chinese TV show about ancient demonic swords and world domination, released to incredible success and won all kinds of awards. So in 2021, they released Swords of Legends Online, an MMORPG inspired by the Guizhan series of games. The MMORPG was buy once, play forever. No subscription, no pay to win. The base game cost around £40. Then in February 2022, it went free to play. So let's download the massive 88 gig game and give it a go. Classes are gender locked and you've got the three main genders, man, woman and small girl. The face design feature is quite nice though. It's not just sliders, you can actually click and drag bits of the face around so you can make your hero look like someone who lost a fight against a wall. So I give myself a name and god Damn it. Stop taking my name in every MMO. You know what? Fine, I'll go incognito. There. Now no one will know it's me. Intro plays. It's voiced. And believe me when I say this is nearly the best voice acting in the entire game. 30 years ago, in the Emperor Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum, the demon dragon seal was broken and evil spirits were free to roam. If you're thinking, wow, that was bad, believe me, it gets worse. First issue, beyond the acting, the very first line of dialogue doesn't match up with the subtitles, and this is a perfect indication of the lack of care and attention that Swords of Legends Online has actually been made with. The intro cutscene shows us the gang forming, and then there's more voice acting. You're up early today. Greetings, friends. It's been a good while. Look, I'm also summon a student now. Oh, sorry. I'm late. As a player character, you get subtitles but no voice. We jump into a portal and the game begins. First choice, classic camera or action camera. The only issue is the voiceover explanation for either starts automatically when you cursor over either option which can get quite messy. The mouse cursor is hidden. In action mode, the mouse cursor. In action mode. In classic In action. In action mode. WASD movement, space to double jump. We run up the steps and a rock falls, destroying the steps in front of us. In a really, really nice touch, they've actually destroyed them very accurately with bricks sliding away from where they previously were. This is a great, gorgeous graphical touch. And that's one of the main problems. Swords of Legends Online looks lovely, plays average and sounds dire. I am convinced absolutely none of the voice actors were given any indication of character or situation or setup. They were literally given words and told, say this. To climb this mountain, we watch a cutscene. Okay, this is another major issue I have with this game. 
all the cool stuff you see happen, from running up mountains to fighting waves of enemies to epic kung fu sky battles, they all happen in cutscenes. You as a player don't get to do or be responsible for any of the cool stuff. You get to do the walking between the cool stuff. We get a load of fantasy words thrown at us and sent to find the sword essence. Sounds cool. You know what doesn't sound cool? The sound. They haven't balanced the random NPC audio from all around you and they all layer together. Have a listen. They have commanded my clan to protect the Get close to the lamp of revelation and interact with but it. she created life in this world and- Infuse this lamp with magic and then some land spawns from thin air so we run across and speak to this teacher who sounds like a text-to-voice machine. Thirty years have passed since the last battle with the Shin Mausoleum. Ever since that day, the legendary swords have resided in the Sword Sanctum. This place is still littered by the weapons of the Fallen. We grope this tree and turn it on. Not like that, you filthy person. Then teleport through it to the Shadow Realm. Okay, so the plot. Imagine you asked the edgiest kid in every school to write a martial arts story and then you ripped them all up and pieced them all randomly back together into one super long story. It's basically that. Now combat happens. Your basic attacks are bound to Q and E, but also left and right click if you are using action camera. There's no central aiming focus, you just lock onto whoever you are looking closest to. As a spell sword, I cast spells which are swords. After stabbing some warriors to death with my ghostly blades, I die to a scripted AoE attack. To restore your health, press F2 and you'll begin meditating. I fight through some more ghosts and oh my god, did no one listen to this game before they released it? These warriors are phantoms, figments spawn of my imagination. If you're the person I'm waiting for, you'll have no trouble destroying them. We can't let the demon dragon break through. Finally, I find the three titular swords of legend, and then my character's voice actor decides to really earn his pay by showing off his impressive range of sex noises. Ah. Huh? the blade heart fragments that wasn't a cut i made in editing that was just how the game jarringly teleports you outside we get told we are super special awesome and now the blade heart resides inside us so there's a magic sword just chilling in us then the game makes me mad read the subtitles it says he slaps you on the shoulder you're a video game you don't need stage directions, you can animate what you want to have happen. Just have the model slap me on the shoulder in-game. If you're just going to describe what happens through text, then just be a book. Another cutscene shows us the furries have teamed up with some gene stealers and are destroying the land, so we now get an on-rails shooter section where we ride a giant mechanised dragon and fling fireballs onto the enemies below. It's really irritating the dragon isn't centred in the screen, so when you swing the camera around it awkwardly positions itself to either side. We get told those things down there are negative chi monsters, so we defeat them with our flaming hot balls of positive chi. More subtitles telling us animations they could have just, you know, animated, and then we get told to beware the big attack by enemies. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't we use the mechanical fire-breathing dragon we were just on? It seemed to be rather effective. Let's just use that all the time. But no, it seems that we need to go and stab things instead. Another cutscene showing a music teacher freezing the invading enemies, and then the sound balancer has clearly stopped even caring. Oh, he must be here. Long you. My darling, wait for me.
Now we're sent to the Valley of the Grasses, and the text can't decide if it wants to be white or blue. Previously, blue was thing that we said, and white was thing that other people said, but now it just seems to be randomly switching. Oh, if you're a bit confused about the plot and can't understand who we are or why we're here or what we're doing, don't worry. I was reading the text, and I still don't know. We get sent to help a village, told to right-click things to equip them, and my god, these NPCs just do not shut up. Every single voice is overlaying every other voice. So where actually are we? Pressing M opens the map, but the animation is super jarring. Your character unravels a scroll and the camera zooms into it, but it's not a smooth zoom in. It's a start, a jump, and then a snap. Look, I get what you were going for. You wanted it to feel immersive, but this, jumping from one position to another, is worse than just having a map pop up. Beyond the map, the actual in-game UI is so incredibly busy, and almost all of the text has a transparent background and is a light colour itself, so it can be rather hard to read or keep up with over everything blending into the bright landscape behind it. Now the game does look gorgeous, but the UI feels like it's fighting for your attention over the scenery. We now get told there are three types of class resources built up by certain attacks and spent by others, and then I check out the mission log or quest journal, which is actually a really nicely organised comprehensive list of all the quests you're on and their part within the major storylines in the game. This is super detailed and easy to navigate. Good stuff. We prove our martial prowess by killing some rocks and taking their rock hearts back to someone. Then we go to a graveyard to kill a giant stone extra hard to make sure it's extra dead. And once again, I am distracted by the voice acting. It really does sound like every amateur dramatics club I've ever been part of trying to audition against each other. Oh yeah, those frost foxes are masters in camouflaging themselves. They hide in the tall grasses. You'll have to look for them carefully. I get told to go and help some foxes, but warned they may be hard to find because they are masters of camouflage. Apparently in this world, camouflage mastery means standing in the sparkly bit with a huge arrow pointing toward you. This was the perfect chance to actually have the player hunt for something. You literally wrote camouflage into the quest and the world, and then did nothing with it. That's one of my problems with Swords of Legends Online. The writing makes it sound deep, the cutscenes make it look epic, but the gameplay, without the context of the writing or the action of the cutscenes, is just so standard. I wonder how many people actually played this game on launch. 18,700 on Steam. That's not terrible. And how many stayed? Oh, about 200. And then it went free to play and now the average is a thousand people a day. That's not dead, but it's probably not the roaring success they hoped it would be. And now the moment the game becomes fun, but not for the reasons the game intended. There's limited ragdoll physics on smaller enemies, and I have an attack which will just yeet small objects away from me, and most of the enemies are indeed small. So from now on, I am Strife, Undead Yeeter. I get told it's vital that I revive the Soul Fire Automaton to defend the village, but honestly, I've just stopped caring about your plan ever since you decided against using the massive mechanical dragon for literally everything ever, so we're going with my plan, which is yeedly deet the undead until they are re-dead. Another cutscene, this dude unleashes his awesome power, but he's so awesome he pulls a muscle and almost dies from too much awesome, so to avoid embarrassing himself he jumps towards the moon. More voiceover, and as the game goes on, the voiceover script and the subtitle script seem to be drifting further and further apart. It's dangerous here, children. What are you looking for? The defence of the village continues, and the negative chi monsters have now been here so long the land is about as negative as the reviews for Morbius, so we cleanse this magic circle through the power of friendship and then a blight beast attacks. And it's so dangerous it needs several powerful mages to hold it back and we are warned not to go near it, for its very skin is toxic. Instead, we need to start a small mech which will fight it for us. So naturally I ignore the mech and go for the beast and... Wow. It's not even got collision. The game literally just told me, if it touched me, I would die. And now I am inside it, and nothing is happening. Way to go, game. Beyond the absolute joke of not even having collision, can you understand the script-writing travesty that is, here is a big enemy, go and start an automaton that will kill it for you, instead of just having, you know, the player fight it. So I start the mech and... God, just watch this cutscene. 
I've not altered anything here. This is what the game thinks is acceptable. Remember, this used to cost 40 pounds. The sword is full of negative chi and will affect people's consciousnesses. Be careful. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I'm a Moist. Please, the sword. I can't. Wait, just give me more time. More. Teacher, Chingar. <laughs> Teacher, tell your father that the things Ching he wants will come a little later. Hansan, where are you going? Hansan, come back now. We can't control that guy anymore. Hmm. Anyone who comes close will be killed. Be careful. It's Mei Jia. I saw her on Taihua Mountain. She's very powerful. You do know something. <laughs> Jin Ching, control yourself. You've written he coughs in the subtitles and yet there's no cough just have the voice actor cough who directed this how did this pass quality inspection we now get given our first mount a flying sword there is another cutscene battle because literally every awesome thing has to happen in a cutscene and oh are we just superheroes now can everyone fly whenever it suits the plot and then finally something actually genuinely impressive happens i finish a pen just used up all the ink. Totally empty. That's a rare occurrence. It's not every day you get to actually see a pen die. More plot. It seems the actual attack was a diversion and the real goal was someone wanted to steal a sword from a palace. So I helped put out some fires in a village built on water. How anything is dry enough to burn is beyond me. And then I get told to take down the boss. Here it is. Here comes some challenging, engaging combat. Watch this mini boss fight. One hit. I am genuinely saddened because the game does have a competent combat system and yet this is what it's done with it. So I head into the palace and now the voice acting changes. In one way, it's a lot better. But in another way, it's a bit harder to follow. Tianxing, you alright? Stop playing, get the sword. You ever been so angry you just spoke Chinese? Because this character has. Now the bad guy shows up and attacks a tree because that's a totally rational, evil thing to do. And then I hear this line and I'm still trying to work out what it even means. I've severely damaged the Lunar Crown tree. Father's mission was already completed. Those people are all headed straight into their own graves. We could also do that later. Has the original script just been Google translated and no one bothered to check for context? More zombies, but this time we use a ballista to repel them. Slight issue with this, the sparkling light guides us to the ballista and continues to sparkle while we're using it. So every now and again, you'll just have your view blocked by a dash of brilliant white light. This village is also experiencing some bad chi, so we cleanse this pond by telling it to think really positive thoughts, and then I discover something quite cool. You can sprint across the water. That's a really nice touch. It is somewhat ruined, however, by the invisible wall. This next bit of quest annoys me, because this dude tells us the healer behind us is super important and is dying. She desperately needs medicinal seeds. So we gather those from the water literally right next to us, and then tell the dude we've helped the healer. And look, you are ten feet apart from each other. You could have been helping her this entire time. And now we ride Lu Shu, a magical talking deer, to get to the next part of the game. This game honestly feels like you have fed an AI thousands of hours of 70s kung fu TV shows and told it to write a script. On the ride, we are given a massive lore dump and then a cutscene which features every possible mistake. Enjoy this almost impressively bad scene. Unfortunately, I can't come. I'm in a secret realm. Sorry. Very kind of you, Chen Ren. 
The Taihua instance is very important. Of course, you must pay great attention to it. Indeed. The Lunar Crown Tree may not be ignored. I have already heard about the business with Chu Chin Su Village from the Grand Summoner. I never would have thought the Blight Beast is so poisonous that even the Divine Tree of Shenong would not be able to resist. Valley Master, how is the Lunar Crown Tree? Although many protectors are working together, the Lunar Crown Tree has temporarily lost its soul consciousness. I'll discuss Taihua Mountain and the Valley of a Hundred Grasses are thousands of leagues apart, yet they were attacked one after the other by the Devastators under the leadership of how is the Taihua instance? That can't be there a coincidence. There are no problems at the moment, but the ten-year reinforcement deadline is approaching, and no one knows. Everything is complicated today, not just Mei Jia, but the Devastators, full of negative qi, also really surprise me. Yes, Chen Ren. The most urgent thing right now is to find out Grandmaster. where these Devastators come from. Lieutenant Yu, what's happened? I've heard that you've ordered the Moist to seize Hao Tsang. Why didn't you tell me? Jian Qing. I can clearly distinguish between the righteousness and the small affection. Besides, what he took away was the nameless sword of my family. Don't worry, I'll bring back Hao Tsang. It's all solely because of him that my Chinger is always so worried about him. Voice acting not matching subtitles, actors talking over one another, varying volume levels, audio cutting in and out randomly, nonsensical plot. That was so bad, if you showed me that scene alone, I'd assume it was a parody. We now get sent to a library to learn about the land and the enemies through a massive text dump. You have to actually read four books. And at the time I disliked this, but now I think about it, it's either reading or more voice acting. So I'm guessing this is the lesser of two evils. I report what I have learned, and then this voice actor is meant to be a child. Have you forgotten that he has been traveling for a long time and hasn't been heard from for a while now? Thanks, I hate it. Oh, and these subs and dubs have completely departed now. There is no link. Wait, Di Wang's sacrifice formation is very complex and requires special materials. Luckily, some of them are stored in Cloudrise. Go straight to Chao Tong Palace and ask Tang Can for them. That'll save you having to look all over the place for them. I now take a break from playing, and when you try to quit the game, it guilts you into playing more, saying, oh, don't quit now, you're so close to unlocking this cool stuff, but real life calls, and now a slight problem. When I log back in a few hours later, I have absolutely no idea what I was meant to be doing. What was the plot again? Who did I need to help? Is there still a magical sword inside me? My only guiding principle is yeet the undead. I now get sent to the bank, and when the chat fades, I am inside a giant ball of yarn. Right, my top guess is that's a cash shop mount, so let's do this. Okay, Gameforge, do your worst. How bad is the shop? Gameforge are notorious for heavily monetized pay to win or pay for advantage games. In fact, Gameforge's involvement in Swords of Legend Online is one of the main reasons people avoided it without even playing it. When your reputation precedes you so much, it actively prevents people from playing games you're involved with, it might be a sign you've monetized things a bit too much. But I have to be honest, Swords of Legends Online's shop actually seems okay. There's a lot of cosmetics, weapon skins, cloaks, footstep effects, and for some reason, a carrot but I can't actually find any obvious blatant advantages. There are new mounts, and they increase your speed by 80%. Now, I want to check how much my mount boosts it by, but I can't seem to actually find the mount section for me. Now, the premium currency is Crimson Coins. 50 quid will get you 11,400. The most expensive item in the shop is a cool mount or a cool costume pack, and that'll cost you 4,950. Can you easily buy that amount? No, of course you can't. There's a 4,800 pack, which is just not enough, so abusive pricing still exists, but credit where credit is due. Swords of Legends Online does not seem to be pay for advantage. I couldn't find level boosts or healing potions or convenience items. The cash shop does seem to be cosmetic only. Nice one. I have a chat to this character's boobs and make everyone watching this video in the background suddenly start paying attention again. Everyone who did now has to like and sub. Hey, check this out. At the top of the screen, you've got some little checkboxes. Hide players, teammates, and enemies. That's pretty cool. So you can play solo or as a non-violent skiller. Good choices, but terrible hitboxes for these options. Look, 
I am moving the cursor very slowly, and the hitbox for each checkbox overlaps both to the side and underneath the box to its right. The enemy's hitbox for clicking is just absolutely atrocious. The world itself is gorgeous. Swords of Legends Online clearly had a massive budget for graphics and ambience. It's a great looking game, but I feel it's coasting on the power of its graphics a little bit too much. It seems the negative chi is affecting us quite a lot, so we go back inside our own mind and fight the big sad. Then this voice actor delivers his lines with so little energy, if he were any more relaxed, he would be medically dead. But don't worry, there's another way. You return to your school and go to the Star Tempest. There you can borrow a relic of the previous Swordmaster from Commander Qin Yang. As long as the Bladeheart Fragment is still alive, it should react. Look at this ice temple. This is gorgeous. If you're a visual tourist type of player, then Swords of Legend Online is definitely worth a look. We head into this temple and then an old man asks us, Do you like swords? Do you like the sword? I consider telling him we actually have a magical sword inside us right now, but I worry this might excite him a little bit too much. Guys, I used to teach martial arts. If the very first thing your instructor says to you is, do you like the sword? Find another place to train. We get given the lunar mirror of distant dreams and another cutscene. Okay, I think some of you still don't get how bad the voice acting and the audio balancing really is. This is the whole cutscene unchanged. Enjoy. Why have you come? Hey. My big brother let me come here. At the end of the duel, you landed a powerful blow on my Tai... At the end of the duel, you landed a powerful blow on my Tai Bai and Shen Mai acupuncture points. Was it not your intention that I come to the peak of Tai Bai at the appointed time? Sword techniques are easy to learn, but beautiful jade is seldom seen. These are my hundred notes. Study them carefully. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Major disaster is coming. Spell sword students, I beg you to take greater care of. Now we've all seen it, we are bonded. Brothers in suffering. No matter what happens in life, we can all find strength in knowing we all together survived that cutscene. Look, this level of quality is proof that either no one tested this scene, or worse, they did test it and no one cared enough to change it. This game has been out for over a year, and these audio issues were there on day one. More NPCs speak to us in Chinese, and we now copy the moves our teacher does to learn some ancient and powerful techniques, which are all less powerful than the Yeetmeister. Nice touch with the water, though. It ripples as you fly above it. That's some real artistic martial arts film stuff. But hey, look, you can pretend to stab someone with your sword mount. You know what? That's actually a great idea. Put a sword mount, stab, attack, dismount into the game. Do it, you cowards. Now a nice little training section. Defeat enemies on this grid in the water while avoiding the good little ice crystals. Now most of my attacks have a cleave or pierce effect, and there's a time limit, so this is actually quite a fun thing to do. It focuses on me positioning myself before attacking like a combat puzzle. We finish training, I get told to open my skills menu with K and train some stuff up and click this button. So I do, and this sends me to a training island and explains basic skills. Mate, I've been playing for six hours. Why is the basic skill section here? Okay, so basically I have something called Sword Intent, shown by the five sword blade icon. To the bottom, I build up my intent to sword you by using certain skills, and then I spend my sword intent on an AoE reign of swords. You know, it would be great if I knew this before. It would also be great if this mattered at all in any case. Every enemy, even bosses, are weak to the Yeedly Deet attack. And as great as it is to learn a new skill, I don't feel I'm becoming stronger. I feel I'm becoming bloated. More techniques I don't actually need. I get sent to this map desk and told to use it for fast travel. You know, there have been a lot of teleportation systems so far. In fact, there have been a lot of systems in general. I've avoided talking about them because they look super involved. I assume they will get used eventually. It's just overwhelming right now. You've got levels, prestige, artifacts, collectible cards, mission logs, pets, skill training, class trees, upgrading items. There is a lot to unpack here, 
and most of it does not get touched for the first eight hours. It seems the main plot is broken down in the Swordmaster Adventure plotline, which you can find in the mission log, so you've always got a basic story thread, even if the story itself is relatively impossible to keep up with. One of my issues with the town is how dead and fake it feels. Every NPC just stands around waiting for you to come to them. Put some life into your city's developers. Have people moving, working, playing. Make it feel alive even if I'm not there. This cutscene, however, is just fantastic. Not only is it a mix of English and Chinese, it ends with the NPC just T-posing for dominance and then bowing away. Spiritopolis will make a fair decision. I'll take my leave. More plot, it seems someone has been stabbed with a demon sword and we need to go and unstab them. We do this by smashing our hoe into the ground. Not a euphemism, look, you have a hoe for some reason. Although again, I bet all of you second monitor people tabbed back quickly, didn't you, you filthy minded people? We fight through some more demons and then run into this absolute comedy duo. Brother, what should we do if the Heavenly Ridge finds out we have secretly inhaled Yin Chi? I'm afraid that not even the General can protect us. Well, we've started now, so let's just continue. Why are the demons from Yorkshire? Why did you speak the secret so loud? You know what? No. I would watch an entire TV show about the misadventures of a Yorkshire demon duo. I want an entire plot thread about these guys and their shenanigans. From the jovality of Yorkshire demons to the terrifying mouthless child. You... who are your parents? My father is Ming Yun Chen, the Grand Summoner of Heavenly Ridge. You rescued me, he will thank you. Why didn't you make the mouth move? It's so much worse because it doesn't move. Anyway, we go to awake a giant stone spirit and this means we get to ride it and slap demons around with our huge rock hands. Right, this voice acting is actually making me angry. It is so bad. Listen to this. Kill Elan! Long live the general! That was meant to be yelled. Instead, you did that playground shouted whisper thing where you put more effort and breath, but no extra volume. Listen, audio techs can just turn the gain down on a microphone in a voice recording booth so you can actually shout and then they can balance it. The only reason you wouldn't actually shout in recording is if the mic you are using can't handle it or you are recording on a phone. It really kills the vibe when I'm expecting a battle cry and I get this. Kill Elan! Long live the general! After everything is dead, I return and report on my demon slapping antics and then I get told... Shh! Quiet! What do you mean, be quiet? I've not said anything the entire game. There's now a cutscene of some evil dude giving a not evil dude an evil sword, and now the not evil dude is evil, and it's delivered with all the emotional weight of an episode of Gardener's World. Who goes there? Th that's... It seems you're familiar with this power. Someone asked me to give you this sword. No matter how worthless I am, I won't accept gifts from enemies. You will. <laughs> <laughs> Head to a temple and light some lamps and oh look, a giant snake statue. You know what? As long as it's not going to tell me we can devour the gods together, we'll get on fine. More plot. We get given a magic bath by these two gentlemen and then a cutscene where the demon dude turns up. Please, oh god, please be an actual boss fight. But no, it's another cutscene battle and then he's gone. Thankfully, he has brought some demons with him. So I get to defend the temple and this is just an insultingly boring combat section. Look, you've given me about 10 combat techniques so far and none of them are better than Yeticus Rex. So why would I use them? Here's the part that I don't quite get. Swords of Legends Online isn't making combat a focus, so it's not necessarily a combat game despite having a great fleshed out combat system. That means it must be a story game, right? Well, they've not given any real love or care to the localization of the story for an English audience. So what's the focus here? You're not giving me polished combat and you're not giving me polished story. So far, it seems the target audience for Swords of Legends Online is people who like cutscenes. I mean, look, this quest is called Don't Defile of the Temple, so clearly story focus and proofreading is out, and it's meant to be a literal demonic invasion, 
and everyone's just standing around chatting like it's lunchtime, so combat focus is out. What are you, Swords of Legend Online? After clearing out the temple, I get sent to rescue three soldiers, and at this point I can't even remember who I'm fighting for or against, so I guide them to a nearby village, and oh, it's the same village from earlier. You know, the land is lovely, but it's teleported me around so much I haven't really had a chance to relate to the layout. I haven't worked out which paths and roads and rivers lead to where. The landscape itself feels like an unimportant extra in the play of cutscenes, which is a shame because the world of any MMORPG needs to become your second home, a place you feel connected to and comfortable in and actually want to protect. Swords of Legend Online is so focused on getting you from cutscene to cutscene it's forgotten to give you a reason to care or connect with what those cutscenes mean for the world itself. I don't care that demons are flooding the world because I don't care about the world you've made because you've not given me a reason to feel like this is my world. I've not walked the paths or swam the rivers. You've just teleported me all around it. Finally, we meet Mengbo, who is the only good voice actor. The traitor Xi'ar is trying to incite his clansmen to seize the Yinhua source. His little sister Shia spoke out against it, however, and explained they had to wait for Ila Walashi before a decision could be made. I came here at Ila Walashi's command to eliminate the traitors. Although some people do survive the mutation, they lose their memories and their temperament changes completely. Those who lose their soul of harmony and virtue become especially paranoid and are hard to control. Look, this here is the farewell letter and the weapon from the traitor I just killed. We honor the god of death and believe that the last will of the dead must be respected. If you can arrange it, please take this farewell letter and this weapon to a young lady by the name of Yang Shang Ting Huang. She is Illawara Shi's bodyguard and is currently standing guard near the king's tent. I tried to find out who voiced this small side character. The voice actor page is surprisingly thin, and I can guess why. If I were involved in this project, I would deny it too. Whoever you are, Mengbo, you did a great job. Unfortunately, the quest itself was to deliver an extremely important letter from there to there. Literally nine steps. I counted. You did not need me for this. Okay, right, I'm going to play until I have one good fight. Just one. I've got a load of skills and I've had no chance to actually need them. I've not been challenged. Thankfully, this very next quest gives me a dungeon manual, a list of all the instances and the level recommendations for them. It seems the Yemo City portal is close by, so off I go. Please, please be good. I enter the instance and... Why is my weapon and armour different? Okay, look, game designers, in an MMORPG, the player often becomes connected to their character. I may not have great equipment, but I earned it. I related to it as my equipment. By just giving me better stuff, or different stuff because you think I need it in a dungeon, you are taking away my agency over my own avatar. I want to take on the challenges you have prepared with my own preparation. I don't want to use the preparation you give me. You do, however, in a touch I quite like, get given some NPC companions to fill in the tank and healer roles of the party because I'm a damage dealer. I like this because it allows you to play solo and it reminds me of Guild Wars 1. I wonder how many lines they recorded for the enemy's dialogue. Humans from Wu Chao, take this! 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 One. Well, two if you include the same line, but in Chinese, which does sometimes play. And now for a boss. And while, yes, it is actually a nice combat encounter with mechanics and AoE attacks and dodging and phases and aggro, it is ruined by the random back and forth jerky camera. I felt a bit sick while playing this. It's not a huge range of movement, but look, see how it zooms in and then out repeatedly really quickly. That happens the whole fight. I think it's meant to be screen shake, but it's actually just really off-putting. On to the next mini-boss, and I don't think the voice actor was told this was meant to be intimidating. Hand over, Lady Yulang, immediately, and I will leave you in one piece. 
Finally, we find the actual dungeon boss in a big arena surrounded by minions and strong elite support. Look, the combat system itself is fine, and this is actually a really nice fight. There's dodging, there's mechanics, there's timings, but the game doesn't seem bothered about being the best story experience it can be, nor does it seem bothered about being the best combat experience it could be. You can drift through the opening eight hours on autopilot and never once feel challenged or accomplished, and it's a shame because the foundation for a great MMO is here. The world, the combat system, the enemies, everything you need to make a good online experience is here. It's just arranged badly. It rushes you through the game and it doesn't give you as a player time to savour what they actually have. It's like having a huge kitchen stocked with the freshest ingredients and top of the range equipment but instead of getting a trained chef to make something amazing you just grab the guy who yells at pigeons in the town square and told him to do his best. I mean look, when I finish the fight I feel great but then I try and open the reward box at the end and I'm not quite a high enough level to open it. That's fine, but when you attempt to do something you can't do, your character is meant to say, I can't do that. And it does, but for this one specific instance, it says it in Chinese. The dungeon took me about 20 minutes to do, and while it was fun to play through once, it was the most challenging part of the game so far, it didn't leave me with any real desire to play more. If anything, it made the actual main plot seem even more boring by comparison. Just to be thorough, I checked the screen customization options and they are really extensive. See, behind the scenes, the foundation for a good game is there. It's just so rough around the edges, it's basically sandpaper. So, Swords of Legends Online. A promising start with a strong marketing campaign which, despite being published by Gameforge, has so far managed to avoid the predatory grasp of pay to win. Ruined by a very obvious lack of care in general. It's a good looking game lacking in any real developer love. They're not going to fix the atrocious voice acting, the plot is so tangled and drags the player along at a breakneck pace they can't really develop any connections to NPCs or places. And the cutscene lets you watch the cool stuff but not participate or be responsible for it, so you feel like you are a supporting character in the grand adventures of people way more powerful and important than you. While there's nothing necessarily wrong about not being the chosen one, in fact I actually like games where you aren't particularly special, you still need to be given the opportunity to do special things. Things, not just watch other people around you do the cool stuff. In Swords of Legend Online, every single NPC you meet tells you that you are talented, you are special, you are awesome, you are the most promising student they have ever seen, and then every time there is a cutscene, you do absolutely nothing. It's a power fantasy that doesn't give you the power. It's a story that isn't loved and a combat system that isn't explored enough. So, to end the review of Swords of Legends Online, I will award voice it. Acting thank you for watching. Another massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and You can support Twitch. from only one Check pound the a video month. description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and, as and always, Discord. Have a great day.